Hello, I'm JW, and I'm not in the usual place today because we're actually going to do a practical demonstration, and this video is about voltage drop. So what we've got on the surface behind there is the uh, Fluke uh, measuring device, which will show the mains voltage, just plugged into the socket on the wall behind, and I've also got an electric kettle there, plugged into the same outlet. And of course, as we're in the kitchen, we've also got some other appliances, such as a toaster and electric oven, all of which are connected to the same circuit as well. And they're actually on the other side, but uh, of course we've all seen what toasters and ovens look like. So let's go in and have a look a bit closer and see what's actually going to be happening. So what we've got here then, this uh, Fluke uh, test meter, and we're actually connected to the line and neutral here. And we're just displaying the voltage here in volts, so sort of 220 or so at the moment. And the frequency at the bottom here, 50.1, although that's not uh, particularly important. More concentrating on the voltage for this particular one. So uh, at the moment we've got in the sort of region of sort of 220, 221 or so, and you see it is varying a fair bit, and that's entirely normal and what you would expect. And what we're going to do is switch the kettle on and see what happens to the voltage here. So in the right sort of region of sort of 221, and we switch on, and you see straight away it's actually dropped down to around 211, sort of 210. And if we switch off the kettle, again you see it comes up again to the uh, sort of 220. 219 sort of area. So there seems to be about 10 volts is disappearing every time the kettle is turned on. So again we're at sort of 220 there, switch on, and we're down to 212, and then if we switch off, and it comes back up to 220. So certainly the voltage is dropping, and uh, clearly it's uh, about 10 volts in this particular case. Now what we can also do is to switch on some other appliances here in the kitchen, and we've actually got a toaster over here which is out of sight, but uh, it's got uh, two sections, so again we've got the voltage there sort of uh, 224 or so, and if I turn the toaster on, we'll see that the voltage has now gone down to sort of 221, and if I put the other side of the toaster on, and again now we're down to around 218. And what we've just got behind me here is the oven, so if I turn the oven on, We'll see that the voltage has now dropped to 210 or 208 or so, and if we put the kettle on as well, you can see now we're down to uh, around 202. So that's a considerable drop from where we started. And if I turn off the various appliances here, so we just turn off half the toaster, so it's come up by a couple of volts there, and then uh, that's the rest of the toaster, so it's sort of 205, and we just switch off the oven there, coming up to 213, and of course finally the kettle. And then we get back to that sort of 220, 223 sort of area. And even though it's all switched off now, you'll also notice that the voltage is still fluctuating and uh, moving around all over the place. And this is purely for the fact that other appliances are being turned on and off elsewhere in the area. So not just in the building here, but of course in next door and the uh, people across the street and so on. So the voltage is uh, changing all the time as various loads are switched on and off. So let's have a look at how this actually works. And for that we'll obviously go back to the whiteboard in the usual place. So in the kitchen there we saw that as the load increased, the voltage we were getting decreased. And in the case of that one it actually decreased a considerable amount. So let's just draw out the circuit we had there. So essentially we've got our main supply from the electricity company, so, so that's 230 volts. And then of course we have wires from there, which went through to the kitchen. And then in the kitchen we had the kettle and the various other things. And the kettle is just a heating element, which is essentially a resistor. And in the case of the kettle there, it was actually rated at about uh, 2.3 kilowatts. Uh, so that's around uh, 2,300 watts. Oh, that's a fairly typical rating for an electric kettle. So uh, line here and the neutral here. Well, that's it. it doesn't actually matter because of course it's an AC circuit. Now it just happens that a 2.3 kilowatt kettle on a 230 volt supply, it works out that the resistance of the heating element inside the kettle is actually 23 ohms. And the current that would have been flowing in the circuit in that instance is uh, just the voltage divided by the resistance, so 230 divided by 23, so you would have had a current here of around 10 amps. So that's really said perfectly fine, and of course uh, just a normal resistor there, and obviously the current flows through and that heats up. But of course the question is where is this uh, voltage reduction occurring, 
And of course the answer is that this model of a uh, circuit is completely wrong and totally useless because it makes a rather large and obvious assumption and it assumes that the wires here, and of course returning here, have no resistance at all, so effectively zero ohms in these wires. And of course this isn't true at all because these wires are made of copper. Copper has uh, some kind of resistance. So although this is typically how circuits are drawn with the uh, load here and the voltage there and nothing in between, it's completely inaccurate and doesn't represent the real world at all. So the real situation is, of course, these do have some kind of resistance, and uh, for the purposes of this uh, example, we'll say that the wire here has a resistance of 0.5 ohms, and of course the uh, other wire here is the same length, so that will also have a resistance of 0.5 ohms. So this changes the situation considerably, because uh, the total resistance in the circuit now is not 23 anymore, 23 here in the element, but we've also got half here and half here, so the total is half, half, and 23. So the total resistance is now 24 ohms. So uh, we'll just get rid of all of this here. So we've got 24 ohms in total. And uh, if we do the calculation again, it's the uh, current which would flow. Again, the voltage we're supplying at this end is still the same, that's 230 volts but we're now supplying it to a 24 ohm total resistance in the circuit, rather than just assuming it was only the element at the end there. So uh, 24 ohms, and again it's the same as before, so it's 230 divided by 24, so the current we're now going to get through there is actually 9.58 amps. So it's quite a bit less than the 10 amps that we assumed would have been flowing in the first instance. Now, because we know the current flowing through the circuit is 9.58 amps, this is a simple circuit, so of course the current flowing in all parts of it will be the same, so there's going to be 9.58 amps here and here, and of course through the heating element as well. And we can now work out what the voltage would be across the heating element here. Now, we saw before that this is actually a 23 ohm element, and of course the total of 24 is that plus the two halves there. And to get the voltage, we're going to multiply the current here, which is 9.58, and multiply it by the various resistances. So for the uh, resistance of the element here, we're actually going to get 9.58 times 23, so that will give us a voltage here across the element of 220.4 volts. And then for the others here, it's the same thing, so 9.58 multiplied by 0.5 ohms, and that gives us uh, 4.8 volts here. And of course it's the same here because it's the same value, so another 4.8 volts in there. And of course these three all add up to 230, so 4.8, uh, 4.8 and uh, 220.4. So the total voltage here is still the same, 230, but unlike that theoretical model where we assume that the wires had zero resistance, the voltage is being divided amongst the various resistances in the circuit. Most of it is still here across the element of the appliance, but of course a small amount is here on the actual wires, and of course the uh, other wire up here. So the result is that we're actually getting about a 10 volt reduction in the voltage across the kettle when it's switched on. So starting with 230 over here and ending up at sort of 220 or so across the kettle element. And this effect uh, will change primarily depending on the resistances of the wires that supply the appliance. Now 0.5 ohms is quite small, but uh, if you had, say, very long cables that went sort of uh, 200 metres down your garden to one of those sort of uh, outside sheds or office type things, the uh, resistance in those wires could become considerably greater than that. And you might find it by the time you got down to your garden office, if you'd use, say, particularly thin cabling, you might find that there was many tens of volts that had uh, mysteriously disappeared. And of course that's all due to the uh, higher resistance of the cables supplying that. Now an interesting side effect of this uh, issue here is that the power of the kettle is not 2300 watts anymore because we've only got 220.4 volts there and uh, it actually turns out in this particular one that the power being dissipated in the kettle here is actually only around 2110 watts so that's quite a bit less than its uh, intended rating and the result of this uh, reduced voltage here would just mean the kettle takes longer to boil and the rest of the energy is actually being dissipated in the wires which will heat up to a small degree as the current flows through them. 
Now all wires heat up by a little bit when they're in use, that's not normally a problem. And of course you would select the wires when designing the installation to minimise that effect. But if these had fairly high resistances and you attempted to put a reasonable amount of current through, then it's quite uh, likely that these would get very hot, possibly causing damage to the insulation. Now when the other appliances in the kitchen were being switched on, they're all connected to the same circuit. So essentially what we were doing, we're adding additional resistances here in parallel, so that might say be the toaster there. And of course we have the oven and various other things could be added in. And uh, the result of this here is that we're going to actually increase the current flowing in the circuit. And therefore, uh, though these wires are of course the same resistance, with a greater current flowing here, the voltage drop will actually be increased simply due to the fact that you're multiplying the resistance here by the current flowing through the circuit. So of course higher current means a higher voltage will appear across the wires and therefore less across the various loads that you had installed there. Now this particular example here only deals with the resistances of the wires inside the building. But of course in the real world uh, this is not really very accurate either. So if we just get rid of all of this and we'll draw that again because uh, there's yet another effect to consider. And if we draw in our kettle over here, just that uh, fixed resistance there, we have our wires which go back to our fuse box or whatever. And say 230 volts in there. But of course these uh, do not magically just appear in your house, they of course have many things before that. So prior to this you're going to have uh, things like your electricity meter, Let's draw that in as a uh, box there. And of course prior to this you're going to have wires which go back to the electricity supplier and they're going to go back to some kind of a transformer which is where the electricity is originally supplied from. And of course as well as these wires here having a resistance, that was sort of 0.5 ohms or so we said there, the wires from your meter to your say, fuse box or whatever will also have a resistance in there. Even the meter itself will have a small resistance inside. And of course the wires from your actual house to the transformer, whatever that is, also have some kind of resistance in there as well. And of course that's true in both of the conductors, just as it is inside of the house. And when you switch on the kettle here, of course the current is going to flow through the entire circuit all the way back to the transformer. And all of these individual resistances will add up to ensure that the voltage still reduces here. Even if you manage to connect this sort of right at the terminals of the meter, you're still going to see that reducing effect purely because of the resistances of the wiring and cabling from the transformer to your house. And even after all that, there's still another issue to consider, and that's actually the transformer itself which of course cannot supply an unlimited amount of power and clearly the uh, internal windings will have some kind of resistance and uh, more accurate is going to be the impedance of the transformer. But again that's going to have some effect and again contribute to the uh, entire system there. So regardless of what you're going to do there's always going to be some voltage lost within the circuit cabling and the wires to your house and hence when you switch on pretty much any load you're going to find that the voltage here actually reduces. Now of course when designing a circuit and selecting the appropriate size cables it's important to take this into account as there are limits for the allowed voltage drop within an installation. There's not really anything you can do about the stuff prior to your house or the consumer unit so pretty much anything prior to this point is uh, something that the electricity supplier would have to deal with but certainly the wires uh, within the circuit should be selected to ensure that the uh, voltage drop is kept to a minimum and this will be based on the expected load to be placed on the circuit and of course things like the distance are far away, so longer cables of course would have a higher resistance. So if you're going to have a load that's a considerable distance away, it says quite often the case you'd have to use larger cables than you would normally, just to ensure that the voltage drop is kept to a minimum. Now there's two percentages uh, which are actually allowed for voltage drop within the installation, and uh, the first one of these is actually 5%. And that's pretty much for all circuits except for lighting circuits which are actually 3%. So lighting and uh, pretty much uh, everything else. And lighting has a low percentage simply with the fact that if there's a uh, reduction in the voltage on the lighting circuit it's generally going to be a lot more noticeable because things like lights might go dim or uh, start flickering or whatever. In the case of say an electric kettle 
the only side effect is that the kettle would take slightly longer to boil. But again, with only 5%, that's not going to be really noticeable, so not such a big deal. But certainly lights, it's uh, very apparent if voltage drops by even, say, just a few volts. Now let's look at voltage drop, and essentially it's just the resistance of the wires, or the conductors, which uh, contribute to the total resistance of the circuit. And of course those uh, models which show just wires and then a load at the end are a load of nonsense, because all wires have some kind of resistance. Generally it's quite small, in the order of less than 1 ohm, but certainly it's definitely there, and it does make a considerable difference in many cases. Now you can calculate the voltage drop like that uh, for any circuit, but in other cases you don't actually have to do this. And uh, if you've got a copy of the uh, on-site guide, the uh, little yellow book at the moment, then it has inside a whole list of uh, what are termed as sort of standard circuits, the sort of thing you might find in a uh, typical house or small commercial premises. And uh, it actually has the maximum lengths which are permitted for various circuits. And in virtually every case the maximum length is limited simply by the voltage drop not exceeding the 5% or the 3%. So in most cases you can simply just look up the maximum length permitted, and of course ensure that's not exceeded. And if it is going to be exceeded then you need to make the cabling larger to reduce the resistance of the conductors. And of course you can still calculate it manually if you thought it was necessary. And there's actually a section in the back of this same book which has details of that as well. Now the uh, particular demonstration we showed there did show the mains voltage going well below the legal limit of 216, and the effects of the voltage drop there were significantly greater than they would normally be in a normal house. And this is because that particular house, and in fact uh, most of the ones in that street, are subject to a fault at the moment, where the uh, cabling outside in the road is either defective or damaged or something, and the uh, voltage there does uh, go all over the place quite often, and uh, at certain times of the day, mostly in the early evening, it actually drops well below 200. Now that fault has been reported and the uh, road will never be dug up in the fairly near future, but I uh, use that uh, particular building as it was a good demonstration of the effect. But certainly in a normal house you uh, shouldn't be seeing anything like that when you switch on the kettle. So uh, that's all for this time, and uh, the calculations on there for the uh, resistance and amps and so on, I will do another video on those uh, separately, so uh, if that didn't mean a great deal to you there with the different calculations, then we'll cover that at a later time. But until then, thanks for watching.